Hey guys, welcome back. I want you to grab a snack, grab a drink, whatever you want, because I'm going to show you part three of my houseplant tour, which is my sunroom, which is also where 99% of my plants are, so it's gonna be a while. I hope I can give you some time to kind of see what you like and I'm going to try to go slow enough and not just blow through all of them. I want to get this documented so for my own kind of record too so I can go back and see how much things have grown. Let's get into it. Okay, so I first just wanted to show kind of where this room is in relation to our house. So this is our main living room over here and then this used to be the deck and the previous owners turned it into a all seasons room so it doesn't have any AC like kind of central AC or heat it has a little box that does heat and air if we need it but we added on the deck afterwards because we kind of missed having a deck so this is the sunroom and this is where I've just kind of taken over and it gets really good light in here I will talk about the directions of the windows in a second but this is where we honestly spend a lot of time in here it's just relaxing and the kids like to spend time in here too. The windows, this is a east facing and then this whole wall is north and then this is west. So it does get nice bright light, but I do kind of have to watch what's in this window because sometimes, especially in the winter, it doesn't get as much light. Before we get going on plants, I wanted to mention the couch first because I get questions on this all the time. This is the Neva Chase sectional in Nectarine Dream and I will link it down below. It is literally a cloud. I absolutely love it. It's um, feathered down and so it's really soft and poofy and we have just really enjoyed it. The second thing I get asked about all the time is this humidifier. This is the Hometics Total Comfort Deluxe Humidifier and it's absolutely gorgeous. Highly recommend this one. I will also link this down below. It has an auto off feature so it comes on when your humidity drops below the set number and it turns off as soon as it reaches it so it's definitely a great thing to have i just make sure i keep it full and that's good to go we're gonna get to the plants in a second i promise but i wanted to let you guys know that i have been in this house for about five years and it took a good part of those five years before this room became what it is now so if you are wanting to build a jungle of your own in your house don't rush it make sure that you find plants that enjoy your space and that will thrive Otherwise, you're just gonna give yourself a headache. Definitely do it if it's something you are passionate about. If you are not passionate about it, I do not recommend because it is a lot of work. Okay, so starting on this wall, this is the east facing wall. So I have two Wally Grow planters here. This one has a Syndapsis Pictus Silvery Ann, and then a Global Green Pothos. And then this is my watermelon peperomia in this one. You have a Hoya Crimson Princess right here in this stand. And this stand is just an upside down um, tomato cage with the legs cut off. These are so easy to make and fun. So if you want a weekend project, that would be a great one. Um, but this is the Crimson Princess. And then we have one of my pride and joys. This is the Zero Sissio Stanguii, the silver dollar vine. This one is pretty old. I think I've had it about four years and I got it as just like a little um, maybe five branch um, pot and it has just exploded with growth and I love this one. Definitely a favorite. I have my Hoya Serpens in here. I just put this little cloche on top because they love high humidity and I wanted it to root and you can see the little fuzzy air roots that are growing in that high humidity. So it's loving it in there. This one I believe is a Ripsalis. I got it not too long ago, so I don't really remember now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Ripsalis and it's been happy here too. This is my string of turtles and it's really, really happy in this east window. I water this one when it's almost completely dry and I had it outside for a little while on my porch, but I brought it inside just because I wanted it in this window where I see it all the time because it's been so cute lately. Here is my string of hearts and this one goes all the way down and then wraps around and I put it up on this little ledge so that these can get sunlight too. Otherwise it would just be hanging down onto the air conditioner unit and so they wouldn't be getting as much light. This one right here is the Philodendron Brantianum and I have not had this one for very long. 
um, but it is still looking very happy and healthy and that also loves this window. We have my Hoya Matilde or Matilde and this one has been blooming for me pretty consistently this summer and these blooms are so cute. You can see the little drops of dew right there. Um, but these are, ooh, it's very sticky. <laughs> um, but these are really fun plants. I, they're kind of hard to find. So if you do see one, grab one. I think they're really fast growers and the foliage is just really pretty, especially when they get kind of splashy like that. This is the Hoya Bilobata. And this one also is getting nice and full. It has a lot of trailing vines going down and I have started to let it climb up here. This is one of my oldest plants. This is a mixed basket of string of pearls and string of tears. I put these together and they have just taken off. I've trimmed this quite a few times just because once it gets to here, I don't like to let it go any further. It just gets kind of stringy. So I usually just cut it about right here. I have a Hoya linearis over here too, which also seems a little dry. I have a Hoya elliptica right here and it's on a little clear trellis. I love these. These are from Propagation Diaries on Instagram and they're just really nice for Hoya. And then I have my Epipremnum pinnatum variegata, which is growing on this pole. It has grown into the pole successfully. I don't know if I can see. There's quite a few roots growing back in there too. So it's very happy and I do feel like the leaves keep getting bigger and bigger, which also makes me excited because these are so beautiful when they get nice and big. And I think that's all for this window. It's my favorite. I love the like plant curtain look. Okay, moving on to my north facing wall. These propagation holders are from Modern Botanical and they are made out of wood and they just hold these little vials. And so in them, I have a Monstera cutting up there, an Anthurium, and then I have a Florida Ghost, I believe, cutting, and then another little cutting from my Brandy. Um, and then over here, I have my String of Arrows, which if you guys want a fast-growing vining plant, this is your guy. This thing grows like crazy. I've had to tear it off of this multiple times. I've had to tear it off of the Hoya it's growing next to, and it just grows literally like a weed. So if you want something that's gonna give you immediate jungle vibes, this is the plant for sure. And then on this table, I have a few terrariums, and this one is self-sustaining, so I don't add water or anything to it. The others are more just a couple cloches, and then this is just a little, basically like a prop box. So I do add water to that one. This one has a false aralia in it. This one has a, a jewel orchid. Makotes Petola, I believe, and then I have a little propagation of my bigger Mama Pelea Peperomioids over there that we'll get to, a Hoya Imbricata. I have my Peace Lily Domino that I just put in water. I have that video over on Instagram if you're interested. Up here, I have a nice big Hoya Macrophylla, um, a Cebu Blue, po Cebu Blue Pothos that I just picked up at Lowe's. And then my most favorite Hoya of all time, the Hoya Lacanosa. I believe this one is snow caps, but I've also been told it could be like the Royal Hawaiian or something because it has really dark purple new growth. Um, but this one blooms like crazy all the time and it has not stopped since I bought it like a year ago. So also one of the best smelling Hoyas in my opinion. And we have this crazy sad succulent planter and I have had this thing since we moved into this house five years ago. I have some jade, some variegated jade, dancing bones cactus. Things have rotated out of here over and over. It is obviously not getting the light that it truly wants because things are absolutely reaching and growing down but I really have no other place for it so it's just gonna stay there. Down here I have mini monstera uh, Monstera adansoniae, my purple oxalis, and then I have another mini Monstera, a Calathea, my big Pelea peperomioids, which I love, one of my absolute favorites. I have all of my water culture orchids back here. I also have an Instagram reel about how I do these, so if you're interested, you can go check that out. And then I have over here, oh, I skipped this one. This is a shooting star Hoya. It's the Hoya multiflora. And these, like look at that sap. And they're so, so sticky. It's like syrup. Um, so they're really messy and eventually I do just cut them off too. This is also one of my like thirstiest Hoyas. So if I don't 
water it, the leaves will turn yellow quickly and all of the blooms will drop. So I definitely make sure I keep it watered, but yeah, that's just crazy. And all the sticky stuff falls down to here. <laughs> I hope you guys are hanging in there. We're about halfway done, but it's coming up to my plant wall. So it's gonna get a little crazy. Okay, moving on over to this little corner. I have my big ficus laurata fiddle leaf fig. This one is also about five years old or I've had it since we moved in and it has done well. I did have to add a grow light. This is the Sansi 36 watt grow light above it um, and it's just hanging from a pendant light cord and a hook in the ceiling. So I just wanted to add some extra light for it, especially in the winter. I may even add another one over on this side just to make sure it's getting lots of good light through the darker days, but it's doing fine. I have never repotted it, so it's still in the same pot and soil that it came in. I do fertilize it regularly though. Back here, I have my starfish, Sansevieria, a mixed pot of string of turtles, string of hearts, and then variegated string of pearls. The string of hearts has definitely taken over and is growing like crazy. Purple cloak, alocasia. I believe. I have my nice big philodendron gloriosum, which is one of my most favorites, and it has pushed out this nice new leaf. It's so pretty. I have it in this um, longer planter so that it can kind of crawl as it grows, and it does have new growth coming in right in there, so it's definitely happy. This is the Soul Soils mix that I use for pretty much all of my plants. I absolutely love it. Highly recommend for almost all house plants. I think it would do great, but I will obviously link it down in the description, so go check there if you're needing some new soil. I promise this will be a favorite of yours. Over here, I have my big philodendron squamiferum, which is so fun with these really fuzzy, crazy petioles. I love this plant. It is such a fun one. It's a fast grower and it just is a really good like conversation piece um, with these stems. So I have a prop box right here, just a bunch of random things in there. And then now I think I'm ready to get started on this entire window shelf setup. Before I get started on these, these Acrylic shelves are from beautifulviews.net and I will link them below too. These have been a complete game changer for me because they still let plenty of light in and they just disappear into the window and let the plants shine. And I love them. I get a ton of compliments on them as well. And I do have a discount code for those too, so check below. I think I'm just gonna start up here and work our way kind of like this because otherwise I will lose track. Top one, this is the String of Hearts Silver Glory. So the hearts are more of like, I don't know, I call them silver butts and I just think they're really cute. They're definitely more solid silver than some of the others. So those are really fun. And that one comes down and wraps around here. So it's growing really well. Okay, so I believe this is the Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. And these little pots are the cutest. I can't remember where I got these, but they have these little faces. <laughs> How cute are those with the little legs? Um, this one is a really sad, oh, what is this one? I also forget the name. I'll put that down below too, but honestly, it's super sad and I would not even, I don't know. I wouldn't even mess with it. Next, we have my Anthurium Queen, which here is the newest leaf. I'm very proud of it. It's gonna get huge. Um, this last one had an accident, obviously, but this one will get just as big, if not bigger than this one over here. So it's doing really well. And remember this window faces west, so these get a lot of bright light. Here is a Hoya globulosa, and it also is on a little um, copper trellis that I made. This is philodendron gold violin. That one's really pretty too. Then we have my big Hoya compacta, which is in full bloom right now. Let's go all the way down here and I'll show you. So here are some of the blooms, and then there's some starting back there. There's just so many. Everywhere I look, there's new peduncles and it's just really exciting because these blooms are so fun and they smell really good. They smell like chocolate. And then next to the compacta is philodendron imbi and I'm excited for these to get nice and big. This one probably needs to be potted up soon, but it's happy like that for now. I have my Syndapsis trubii moonlight, which is also starting to trail down. I have a Hoya polynera that I moved out of the greenhouse cabinet because I felt like it was kind of getting um, bleached out and it's been doing better here. My variegated string of hearts, which also is trailing all the way down and it's really happy and nice and full on top. 
and all of the vines that are facing the window are very pink. So you can kind of see the ones that are getting more sun stressed. I have my variegated string of pearls, which also is quite dry and you can see some of the dry pearls in there too. So I need to water this one ASAP. My bunny ear cactus, I don't remember what this one's called. I will also put this down in the description, but this one's super cute and fuzzy looking, but literally I just barely touched it and those little spines come out and they stick in you forever. They're so annoying. I have a outer variegated Hoya carii, which that newest leaf is gorgeous. I have the variegated Hoya huchicleana, also a stunner, also very dry. Are you guys noticing a theme? I need to go through and water these all so bad. And then my Hoya crinkle eight, which is also blooming. You can see a bloom back in there. And then also one right here that's pretty much fading. So I try to take them off before they fade. Otherwise, all of the peduncles or all of the flowers fall everywhere. This is a Syndapsis Jade. Really pretty dark green leaves. My Hoya Crimson Queen. And the way you can tell if it's a queen or a princess is the queen has the white along the edge and the princess has the white down the center. So this is a queen. And I think it was about to bloom. Well, not about to bloom, but I noticed its first little peduncle right there on the very tip. So... I have not had this one bloom for me. I've had it for probably two years and it's done nothing. So I'm just leaving it here and I'm hoping that it picks up soon <laughs> with some blooming because I'm getting a little bit impatient. And then we have the bear paw cactus or no bear paw succulent, which is just a really cute one. This one seems to be pretty easy, but those little fuzzy paws get me. They're so cute. Over here, we have one of my more recent purchases. This is the um, Syndapsis Trubii dark form. So it's the same as this one, but it's just like a dark, dark green. And that one's really pretty. And then we have another favorite, which most of these are my favorites anyway, but a variegated heartleaf philodendron, which is also looking a little parched. <laughs> so we're gonna water that one too. It's an awesome one. I do not see this around very much at all, but these variegated leaves are to die for. So, so pretty. Here is my Hoya fungi, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm usually, I get confused on them a lot because I have too many. This is the Philodendron Summer Glory. This one's really pretty too, but also pretty new to me. But the leaves are just nice and kind of iridescent and shimmery. I really like this one. Here's my Syndapsis Pictus Exotica trailing all the way down as well. And then we have a variegated Discidia oanthus or oantha, and then a variegated Hoya compacta. And that is all along this window. So over here, I have just some extra little like products, I guess. And then I have my insecticide and a pump sprayer, my watering can and a pump sprayer, and then my plant mats, which are some of my favorites. This is the jungle size and I use it for everything. I will also link it below. The other thing I wanted to mention is these hanging pot saucers. So I will put these on and they just hang on the plant and then like the pot and then you can water and it can drain through there, which is so, so helpful. So I don't have to hold a bowl under every pot or take them to the sink. I also have my Hoya dinner plate, my Hoya latifolia dinner plate usually in this window but it's been falling and so I set it here instead definitely can't remember the name of this one so if anybody knows let me know in the comments but I just liked it because it was pretty like shiny and I don't know bumpy <laughs> I just really like these and then in this corner which has done so amazing is my ficus alii or alii however you want to say it ali and it has done amazing in this corner without much light, but it still grows great. It may just be growing slower than it would otherwise, but it has been doing amazing and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites. I just don't show it very much, but it's becoming very like cascading. It reminds me of like a willow tree. Up here I have a huge philodendron Brazil that is starting to grow all along here. And back behind it, is the golden pothos that my mom gave me when I moved to college. And so that was like 15 years ago. I have never put it in a new pot. I've never repotted it. It is just a trooper and it's still growing new stuff. And it is the one that is growing all around <laughs> this entire room. So I actually have 
two plants that are making up most of these vines and it's that golden pothos. And then it is this little tiny Hartley philodendron pot, which let me see if I can even show you. Back in there, there's literally like no vines left. I think there's two little tiny scrawny vines and otherwise it is just living off of all the humidity in this room and it's growing all the way around and that's it up there and it came all the way from that little pot. So it has been pretty crazy to watch these grow but they absolutely love it in here. Okay, moving on to the last wall and this one doesn't get any actual, I mean it just gets ambient light from these windows but all the plants over here seem to do pretty well too. If you notice, I do have some bare vines up here and that happens to me pretty much every winter. I start to lose some leaves and so that is why I have this Brazil starting to grow to help fill in the spots. But I've also started to use this stuff called cakey paste and it works amazing. If you put it on your bare vines, it will grow new leaves and, bran leaves and branches from the spot that you apply it. So definitely go look into this. I will link it down below as well, but it works. It has worked on my Hoya, my Pothos, my Syndapsis, and even my Ficus. So let's get into the plants over here. So this is a Peperomia Ruby Cascade. And as you can see up here, like this top part is kind of bleached out. And I had it in this east window over here and it was just a little too bright for it. So I moved it to this spot and it's been doing much much better and I can kind of see you can see when I moved it now everything else is much darker green and it's growing great this is my Zeographica air plant and I have this little hanger here I can also link this this is one of my favorite hangers and I absolutely love how it looks with this air plant in it and the little curly cues can hang free my other Syndapsis exotica which is growing up there as well. And then also all along this beaded little garland I have. So I let it grow all along there like crazy. Fairy castle cactus, which again, for a cactus is not getting near the amount of light that it actually wants. So it's probably growing stretched out and taller than it should, but I think it looks really fun. And I mean, I only have to water it like once every couple months. Some global green pothos cuttings in here. A cylindrica um, and then here's another Cebu blue this staghorn fern I mounted onto this cutting board a pretty sad begonia maculata but I guess it looks okay I like it this one's just in full water as well and then I have a syndapsis pictus argyreus right here the last little thing I forgot to mention are my air plants and I just made these little air plant holders out of rocks and some wire and they just stay here and they're super happy too. So we dunk them in water once a week for about 30 minutes and then place them back in here and they just love all the bright light that they get. Okay, that's it. You guys made it all the way through. All three parts of my houseplant tour are up now and I hope that if you haven't seen parts one and two, you go check it out so you can see all the different plants I have. If you guys are not already, go follow me on Instagram. I do daily question and answer there for plants and I just love the community that we have over there too. Leave your questions in the comments and I will get to them. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this inspired you to make your own indoor jungle and I will talk to you guys later.